Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Jacob, and in this video we are going to be using Webpack to compile a bunch of TypeScript files into a single JavaScript file that we can then use in web projects or Node.js projects or whatever else you want to use your JavaScript for. Now, Webpack has recently seen the release of version 4.0 uh, as of the recording of this video. That was six days ago. Uh, we got Webpack 4.0, and it has a bunch of interesting new features that I'm excited to get using. So let's get started. Here's the setup that I have for the project. Um, since it's not, we're just focusing on actually getting Webpack up and running and not writing anything special. I just threw together some super simple files. Uh, they're of next to no substance and a TS config JSON file, just because I didn't feel like writing that one on screen, it would be a waste of time. Um, so let's um, take a look at these files we have. Car.js file is a module that we're exporting. Uh, it has a, a class car and a go function that just says vroom, nothing exciting. And then if we check out index.js console.log hi, and then it imports a car, creates a new car, and says car.go. So it should just say hi, vroom. Nothing exciting. But that's that's what's going on there. Now let's actually install webpack because we have to have that installed in order to get this going. So I'm going to say yarn in it wise to create the new project and then yarn add dev webpack and the webpack command line interface. Webpack command line interface is uh, going to allow us to use webpack from the command line in case you didn't know what command line interface meant, which would Okay, I don't know. Um, so now, now that we have it installed, um, we can run it. There's a binary in node.modules and then dot bin, and it's called webpack CLI. Just check out the version there 2.10, and webpack is version 4. Beautiful. So the command line interface here. Um, we don't even have to write a configuration file technically uh, yet because we can specify an entry point by saying SRC. That entry point is where Webpack is going to start. It's going to say, oh, look at this. We need to import this module or this module or this module. Uh, so we'll import for, uh, source or our entry point is source and index.js. And that will in turn import the car module. And then we need to specify our output. That'll put our built file into wherever we specify. So I'm going to say make a build directory and put a file in there called bundle.js. And then we also have to specify a flag for the mode. Are we running this? Are we compiling this code for production? Production, in which case you would say dash p, or is it for development dash d? Uh, we'll do it both ways so we can see the difference. So first, we'll run this, and it compiles it um, to this brand new build directory here. So let's take a look at what's in there. This is a bunch of Webpack boilerplate code. Dun, 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 dun. And here's our car.js file. That's where it begins. OK. And um, this contains like a source map and the actual source that's being run. And then here's our index.js file. As you can see, it's far from optimized. It's much longer than the original, but it contains all of this for the sake of making development easier because source maps are convenient and nice. So this should actually run on node build. And it says hive room, exactly what we wanted. Now let's add. Um, Let's see what happens when we compile it for production. OK. And now it is completely minified and basically unreadable. But still works. Beautiful. Now let's add TypeScript into the mix. So I'm going to install that by saying yarn add dev TypeScript. Add that to our project. Should not take long. And then I'm going to convert our two source files to TypeScript by adding mostly pointless typings. But 
just so that we know it's not being compiled as JavaScript. It'll be invalid as JavaScript. So first I'm going to move these source files to um, TypeScript. I'm going to rename them to source car TS. Okay, so now they're technically TypeScript files. And now let's uh, add some TypeScript typings. So this is just going to be um, a car, in case that wasn't obvious. And we'll edit our source for our car and add some pointless typings here. We'll say like public go and void. And we'll assert that this is a string for no good reason, but it's no longer valid JavaScript is the point. All right. So now if we go back and try and say run this, change that to our TypeScript file, it's going to say, eh, nope, not going to happen. So let's um, start writing our configuration file because we don't want to have to write out this whole big long thing every time we want to compile our application anyways. So I'm going to say vim webpack.config.js. And it's going to look like this. module.exports equals. And in here is our entire webpack configuration. And I'm also going to say I'm going to import uh, the path library uh, system, like standard library uh, from node. We'll use that later. And here we can specify our entry point instead of um, like it was the first argument uh, when we did from the command line here. We can just say entry point is going to be source index. <clears throat> we don't have to spec specify the file extension there. Um, then we need to specify the mode. This is that dash D or dash P flag mode. It'll be either development or um, production. Um, but I'm going to leave it at development. And then um, our output. This will be like that last uh, command or second to last command line argument that we gave it. And so we'll give it a file name of bundle.js. And the path is just the folder. So that'll be path.resolve, the current directory, directory name, and the build directory is where we're putting everything. Okay, and now since we're using TypeScript files, um, I'll actually go back and show you this error here, it said module parse error, you may need an appropriate loader to handle this file type, um, which actually tells us a couple of things. Um, one, we need to use the TypeScript loader, yarn add dev ts loader. And I'll show you where we put this. Um, but there's actually something else that we also have to put in our webpack.config.js file. I'll show you what that looks like. There are two things. We need module resolution and we need the file loader. So those are two separate things. The module resolution allows us to say import car. And then, it uh, then webpack will say, oh, car.ts. We can use that. We can import that as a module because it says so in the configuration file. So we'll do that by saying resolve, resolve as modules by extensions. These extensions count as modules, .ts files, as well as JavaScript files. Um, and then up here, we will tell it what to do with those files. So modules, how are we going to load these rules? looks like this. And then this rule, the test will be um, for files ending in .ts. This is a regular expression, by the way. So um, ts. Usually, uh, we use regular expressions here. Um, so that you can say like ts x question mark, um, if you're using like um, JSX style syntax. Um, if you're familiar with reg regular expressions, uh, this is a pretty simple one to understand. And then so after the test, we'll use which loader? TS loader. Pretty easy. OK, there's our configuration file. And that should be good to go. So let's go back and run this, but just webpack-cli. 
But, um, okay. Moment of truth. Does it actually work? Yes. All right. So we have it successfully compiling our TypeScript into JavaScript. And I just want to do one more feature. Webcat can watch these files, which means that it'll listen for file changes and then recompile the project whenever I change a file. And that's really convenient. It, so you can avoid kind of like the save, go back to the browser, refresh dance. You know, you don't have to add also press compile in there. All right, everybody. Well, there you go. There is a quick introduction on to how to use the new Webpack to compile TypeScript into JavaScript. As always, this code is going to be on GitHub, so check out that. Um, and thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this tutorial educational, and I hope you learned something useful. Anyways, my name is Jacob. Don't forget to subscribe, and have a good one.